Barry Richards was always going to be an outstanding batsman. The seeds were sown certainly very early on and I mean cricket was very much part and parcel of the landscape and every afternoon it was either tip and run or some sort of uh, game of cricket and luckily I had three older boys who lived to, used to live it so it was once you got in you had to stay and otherwise you didn't get a knock for it a couple of weeks so yeah, I think the seeds were sown very early. He was just a magnificent player from, from the time I played against him when he played for Clifton and I played for Highbury at that junior school level. His timing was always uh, fantastic. Richard's first overseas tour was as a schoolboy in England in 1963. I think, you know, it gave us the first sense in my sort of humble career that, that we were as good as anybody else because we were playing the premier schools in England and we were whooping them. I mean, I, I knew we had a really good side. I mean, we were the pick of, of all of the South African schools and they were just a school. So you had to take that into account. But I, I think the ease with which we won all our games and not only that, when we played against second 11s, now these were pros, and uh, I think we, we acquitted ourselves really well against the second 11s, where, where guys were aspiring to play first class cricket and weren't that far away, and here we were, a bunch of schoolboys giving them a good run for our money. So I think that instilled a lot of confidence early on that you know, we weren't out of our depth at all. He played one match for Gloucestershire in 1965. Then he returned a year later with Mike Proctor and Lee Irvine, finding work as a kit boy in the West Indian dressing room. You read about these fellows, Sobers and Canai and Butcher and Nurse, and suddenly there they were. And I mean, uh, it was just a tremendous experience to be able to view them from, from the balcony, which is obviously the best view in the house, and, and to, be, to be part of it and to, to get the atmosphere of a dressing room. And I, and I mean, Sobi was at the time, was the premier all, probably of all time. Uh, one of the greatest, so just being in his company was, was sort of inspiring. I think it inspired me to, to say, well, hey, this is where I want to be, in a test match dressing room, and uh, I'm going to put my head down and try and do it. After enjoying success in English county cricket and in the Curry Cup in South Africa, the rapidly maturing Richards was selected to play in the home test series against Australia in 1970. I think Barry probably played his cricket, uh, most of his cricket, with a point to prove. Um, I, you know, I, I think he felt, and he should have played in the previous series, 66-7, um, but he, the selectors didn't pick him. So I think it, it might have been a good thing for Barry. It might have been part of the motivation that drove him. I think Gary, uh, the Barry, um, played a lot of his cricket with a point to prove. The team in 1970 was an unbelievable team. Where it was so good that at that time Barry was at his peak. Uh, Barry, to me one of the greatest players this world's ever seen. Ali Bakker and Phil Laurie, the two opposing captains, are on the pitch for the toss. Which Bakker wins and South Africa bats first? Barry Richards settled down quite nicely after veteran Trevor Goddard's departure. Joined by his skipper, Bakker, the two batsmen keep the scoreboard moving. I spent half an hour getting off the mark. I'll never forget that because I, the only thing I didn't want to do was get a nought. <laughs> And I'll never forget, I, I, hit, I hit Garth McKenzie for a four square of the week and I think it was like getting a million dollars, you know, it was just such a relief to get off the mark and I, I played reasonably well in the, in the first innings, I, very tense, I, I got around about the 30 mark and then I got 30 in the second innings, but the atmosphere, you know, I'd been brought into it and Ali was very good that way, he, he made sure that if you were a youngster he shared a room with you and groomed you into it, which was, was good and I think the whole atmosphere in the Springbok side at that, at that time was, was just bubbling with confidence and uh, it had to rub off on you and, and that's one of the nice things about playing when you play for your country with the fellows like Ali and Eddie Barlow, it, it was just uh, oozing confidence. Richards did well enough on debut to keep his place for the second test in Durban, a match that would become a high watermark for South African cricket. The Australians come out the field at Kingsmead. Barry Richards is quick off the mark and in an aggressive mood, but he loses his opening partner Goddard and then Bucker and is therefore robbed of the chance of becoming one of the select few to have scored a century before lunch. Barry obviously had 90 odd before lunch, I mean he was firing really fantastically. I remember vividly what happened um, the first session of that test match in Durban in 1970. Um, Barry Richards scored 94. And the ground, it was Barry's home ground, so the ground was abuzz with the, the name Richards. A wicket fell in that last over, Graham Pollock came in at number four. And he, there was a, three or four balls to face in that over. He whacked a couple of fours and then at the end of the over he sort of stood and leant on his bat. And I remember saying to Keith Stackpole, who was next to me in the slips, I said, we've got a problem. And Stacky said, what's the problem? 
I said, he's going to see how many runs Barry Richards gets and then he's going to double it. I was wrong. Barry Richards got 140 and Graham only got 274. In the afternoon session, the Australian attack was put to the sword. Richards and Graham Pollock added 103 in the first hour. That hour after lunch on the first day was unbelievable. I mean, we talk about one day cricket now and how people hit the ball. That was not hitting, that was stroke play and it was the most brilliant cricket I've ever seen in my life. Two greats of the world, the best as I've said, trying to outdo each other in some way. It was one of those sessions that happened every now and then that Barry had played so well and I think when the Aussies came out after lunch they, they, they weren't over positive as what was going to happen. It was a partnership that, uh, that I really enjoyed. It's probably the pinnacle of my test career was that, that moment. I, I'm not sure you know it at the time, but it was, um, you know, in retrospect. I think a hundred in your hometown, in front of your home people, where the, the town was just alive with test cricket. You know, everybody wanted to talk about test cricket, and, and, and particularly as it happened when Graham had played so well as well. I think that was just a magic afternoon, which, you know, was probably the pinnacle.